You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Breaking Bad. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Breaking Bad news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Breaking Bad. Hey, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another After Buzz of Breaking Bad, Season 4, Episode 11, Crawl Space. I'm John Comerford, your host. I'm joined in the studio by Kevin Undergaro, Big Ben, and then Steve Bottomley, and we got Jesse Janity in the booth. Guys, I think this one was the adrenaline-packed <laughs> episode. Man. It started with adrenaline. It ended with adrenaline. Uh, and I was just, I was exhausted by the end of it. Am I, do I have agreement there? Yep. Music-wise, everything. They just pumped and pumped and pumped. I wasn't exhausted. I, I, uh, I still just wish I could have all 12 hours. In a row? Yes. I'm like dying. I have to wait. Enough. And I'm not only dying that I have to wait a week, that I actually have to wait two more weeks to get to the end of this season, which that's a yeah, good segue exactly. into what, two please, weeks from now, October please. 8th. Um, unless there's unless anything negative, unless anything um, gets in the way to stop it, we are hopefully going to be broadcasting the uh, season finale live from the John Lovitz Comedy Club in front of a live studio audience. Um, Maria Menounos will join us to host, and we will hopefully have Aaron Paul and some other um, people from the show. A reprise from our Emmy, yeah. uh, That's awesome. Emmy gift yeah. suites when Aaron stepped in uh, for a few minutes. It was great to talk to him, and he ho- we're working out schedules now to have him come back for that. Which would be amazing. So hopefully we'll have more details next week. When we we're more. gonna uh, Phil's gonna get into it tomorrow uh, with them, and um, but yeah, we're excited anyway to be in front of to be with more fans of this show. Exactly. I, I can only imagine how they feel. So yeah. get get and hopefully get some more uh, input from them as well. That right. would be interesting. I always love when the, when the fans call in. So okay. I, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I, 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 was, I was exhausted after I was watching this. It was great to see uh, all that Gus was going through and all you could see that how deep his uh, machinations have gone mm-hmm. and how much he, I mean, he, to start off with the fact that, that he had a ready-made ER unit set up to go because he knew he was going to need it. And they, they, not only did he need it, they were extremely well packed. And, and uh, ready for anything, that, any contingency that might come along in killing uh, Don Eladio and, and what it might happen in the aftermath. Did anybody see that coming? No, I said, I mean, not at no. all. Okay. Not when when at they were all. showing the ER unit, I went, I was thinking, you got to be kidding me. No, did he? You knew right did, away. See, I just thought it was yeah. a Mexican hospital. Yeah. I had no idea. No, as soon as I saw the plastic and everything, that, oh, that, you know, I didn't see I the plastic. It, I just went, yeah. This is how deep yeah. this guy planned this out. Yeah. That, that, it, and it's Asked. a great example of just showing, look, this guy is always four or five, six steps ahead of anybody. Yeah. Which, you know, as, as they have this chess match with, um, I know. Does Walt even? You guys, does Walt even have a shot? Because Walt I, doesn't yeah. think so. No, I love he about doesn't. it. The chess match. And, and so why? You think why that is Walt's Walt got control? And well, then he because doesn't. But why Walt is Walt is, able to hang in when Walt doesn't have? Isn't five or six well, steps so ahead? Far, only because he's been able to cook. Yes. He's only. That's the only reason. Because he's been able to cook and, and cook so well at ninety nine percent. That's right. right. Ben? Yeah. And, and Gus hasn't been able to do anything about it until now. So, because until then, this is my guy. I got to live with this. Because he's the only one that can cook like this, so that's that's what's going to be keeping him alive, of course. But here's the thing that, I'm, that I find interesting: it seems that obviously it seems like Gus is the mastermind of all this, and incredible chess player, very intelligent, all that kind of stuff. But I don't think for a second that Walt isn't less intelligent. He just has a, he has an intelligence that isn't used to this playing field. I agree. So yeah. The, yeah. I can't wait to yeah. see when he starts really taking the turn, mm-hmm. saying, "Okay." All right, this in is wrestling terms, we say hulking up. Exactly. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. got to play in this world, on this field. Okay. Now, he's yeah. going to be still be inexperienced. I mean, that's, Gus has been doing it for, what, 30 years, 40 years. I don't know how long. 30 years, I guess. Uh, so he, he obviously knows the field better. But it's going to be great when Walt this, when realizes, okay, I can't 
rely on just my intelligence. I got to get in here and, 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 and really he, play this game. You certainly can't rely on, on the fact that he has the recipe because yeah. Jesse, no. although Not Jesse's anymore. only 96, yeah. but That's good he enough. still is good enough. can do it. And this is what I love about it. Every time you think, dude, all you have to do is say this. <laughs> the conversation right. well, never yeah. happens. They are always being manipulated against each other. I'm, uh, what a great scene. I know I'm jumping ahead, but the great scene with him in the desert. Uh, uh, okay, uh, oh, hold on. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> get to it. But, I mean, how long have we been too waiting many, for that? Too many great you'll scenes never, to go through. Remember what Mike said, you'll yeah. never see yeah, Gus never see again. again. And so by that's a, that must be a credit to Walt in some way. Yeah, because now you have That he forced that. And Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. And who, what a and, surprise and not, that was. Not to pimp that thing too much, but could you not just see Gus just wanting to just cap him yes. right there? Just, it was yeah. killing him to have to say. And it was nice to see emotion out of Gus, which yeah. shows that like Walt is yeah. under his skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is good because... Because back. Gus is at his best when he shows no emotion. Right. Yes. That's when but but the last control. couple, he has been kind of like, yes. he's, he's slipping. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. laying it in. He's losing, the finger here, the yes. thing there, he's there. losing his calm demeanor. <laughs> Leave it to Walt. Which means that the recipe <laughs> yeah. for the chicken is not going to be good. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And, oh, the, 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 I'm going back to the uh, ER unit. The bl- when Jesse saw his own blood, <laughs> oh. <laughs> not his own blood, but blood the, ready for him. Jesse's him. like, what have I gotten into? Exactly. But, you know, it was just interesting that Jesse was taking up for Mike. Oh, yeah. And, and here's that. what I'm wondering. I love that This part. is what I found so interesting. He's so ensconced now because he knows that he's he could be a, a death story any second now, too. All he had to do was not help them, and he'd be free. Sure. Right. They were so debilitated. Right. They're ready to die. Gus and Mike. I was why? watching why? it with Maria, you know, and she's, yeah. God, so masculine in her thinking. She's like, oh, he just needs to let them both die. Yeah, and just walk away. Just business, you know, yeah. that's better business rather than be, you know, bonded to these guys. But, that, but that, you know, that's not his character. His no, character nope. would be against his character. It, it, might, it might be his character to think about it for a second, but, but he, no, he can't But no, it's do not it. his good Plus, character. Plus, he may, he, in the back of his head, he may know, you know, he has no idea how long Gus's reach is. You know, he, he doesn't, he, he probably doesn't know what kind of contingency plan yeah, but Gus here's the thing. Have, but, but I'm with you. No, but he was talking. Yeah. But no, but you know why, Steve? I don't. I don't think that factored yeah. in because he'd been. He was open to killing him with the poison. Yeah, exactly. Cigarette, you know, right, the poison. That's right. Yeah, that's and he right. It already that's had right. it in his head, and he, and he and he couldn't on a few occasions, or didn't on a few occasions. Here, it would have been easy. Yeah, there's no one to stop him. No, he just got caught up in being yeah, loyal. Yeah, just caught and, up in being. Yeah, and, the, and the, you know everything, the adrenaline rushing or whatever, and he thought, uh, I, I, you know, I was. I'm going, why isn't he, but why didn't he even that, cross his mind? They laid that in really well with the last few episodes of him hanging, hanging with Mike and, mm-hmm. you know, going out and Mike being like the father figure for him and, right. you know, good job, kid, and all that stuff. So when he says, get us out of here, kid, yeah, he's going to like, oh, my dad wants me yeah, to get him out of here. But here's the thing, right, right. But what I thought, I thought for me would have been, is a missed beat is where was the thought of, wait a minute, I could be free and clear mm. and not have to live, not have to deal with having deaths mm. hanging over my head. Mm. I, I didn't just let them die of natural causes, so to speak. I didn't do it. I just didn't help them. You know, <laughs> They're I, already dead. There, you mentioned the blood scene. I, I I don't know which would be more disturbing if I were Jesse. Seeing blood labeled for me or not, or seen, not yeah. seeing any blood labeled for me. Right. <laughs> so I would feel a little like, oh, I'm covered. Mm-hmm. That's a really nice setup, too. They use Tulsa and Hughes coolers, yeah, which yeah. are... Top They're the line. best. Yeah. So and shout out to Tulsa. <laughs> shout out to Tulsa. <laughs> Yeah, it would be a little bit. Wait a minute, where's my blood? Feel free hey, to, hey! Feel free to contact me, I could use but, one. But I, I just think it would have been interesting if they at least showed me that moment. I would have loved to have seen that moment on Jesse of, mm. of, thought, of thinking, I could be free of this. Because that's the whole thing that they've been trying to do, is get out from under this. Right. And don't you think the adrenaline was just going, John? You, yeah, I know, but, uh, that, even if, but you're driving, you're, even if you're oh, driving you're right, five right, minutes, right, right, in right. those five minutes, you're yeah. going to be thinking something. Right, right. yeah. And right. even I just just that stop, you know, of, and just to see him because I love the way he acts. The guy's amazing, and see, have him play it all in his face, have him look at the guy, whatever. Right. That would have been fascinating. Here's what I was wondering when they're driving up, and I'm assuming Mike was still um, conscious enough to be giving him directions. But how did he know where to go? Because if he was in, you know, if he was in involved at the good very point. beginning, that's a good point. Then he would have known the hospital set up. We need to go here. So well, Mike had to have still been, and Mike was conscious, so he was probably right. saying he you know, probably directed them. Go here, yeah, and, well, because he he walked him in. So right. Yeah. He was conscious. Wait, Mike looked pretty There's bad. There's the necklace. Yeah. Exactly. There's the necklace. And then the whole reason why he took the necklace, we find out later. Um, <laughs> which is great. Oh, the best line in it. You know what about here? He's, you know, he's my friend. He pays my salary. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, so while all that is happening, we go back to Walt, and he's <laughs> cooking in the lab. Right. <laughs> and just cooking by himself. All alone. And he, yeah, all alone. He can barely lift things because he's still beaten up. And mm-hmm. said, I, you know, you know what? This, I don't know about you guys, but he was coughing a lot more in this. Yeah. Did you guys notice yeah, that? Yeah, they're bringing, yes. they're bringing mm-hmm. that beat up. So yep. I thought yeah, that was interesting. So it's, we're going to find out if uh, he was really uh, holding out on us, whether or not his Cancer is in remission or not? What do you think the beat was about him mismeasuring the? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I couldn't figure that out e- either. He uh, was off by point two. Right? Was it? No, you think it was just an honest one. mistake. No, it was point oh two. Point oh nine. Actually. Forty point one or it was forty point three, and then it's no, it was forty point two one. So point oh nine, he was off. Anyway, you know why? Do you, the point John, is, yeah, why? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm either he just made an honest mistake, or it's just his little. Because Walt is really passive aggressive to some yeah, degree. Yeah, right, right. So we, it when might we, have been him doing it on purpose, just, uh, just to yeah, mess just with to, the guy. just to mess with him. And then not only did did it not work, he got called out for it. Right, right, right. He's, he's still being watched by the man. Boy, was he was great. I don't even know his character's name at the moment. What's his name? The new henchman, the new yeah, Vic. No, nobody new knows. I don't think they've said that. The man great. with no name. Uh, he was. I thought he was terrific in this. He didn't, barely said anything, but the, just the little looks on his face. And then when they came out with the taser, and yep. the little thing, oh. and that, the light on hmm. that thing. Okay. Oh, he looked amazing. Hey, can I be just because, you know, I do the Jersey Shore, so go, I just go, have go. to bring you, like, the low life end of this. Go ahead. I'm. I'm fucking sick of this shit. I want Walt to fucking wipe all these motherfuckers out. I really, I was like, Gus had me last week. I was cheering for him, but you know yeah. what? He showed what a evil fucking yeah. cocksucker he is, what a sadistic evil motherfucker he is. And Walt, when he, Walt was on his knees uh, and he was crying for his family, yeah. you see again, uh, an under, no matter how many bad decisions he's made, there's yeah. still a decency left within him, sure. and you see it. And there's obviously a great decency in Jesse. I'm ready for them to turn the guns. Yeah, I'm so fucking ready <laughs> for Walter to score a comeback. <laughs> I've had it, like, and I'm, it's coming. I'm promising but you, that's, it's that's coming. Oh yeah, that's the chess match. And yeah. now they've positioned Walt where they said, not only are you getting knocked off the board, we're not going to give you anything to fight back with. Right, and, and, we're, and, and, and we're, you're going, well, how is he going to do it? He's a cornered rat. But, and also, I, I, I'm sure you're. You're obviously not alone in feeling that. I'm sure ninety <laughs> percent of the people out there are feeling that, but that's one of the reasons why it's so damn good, because you keep fighting for these things, you keep I wanting just, these things, I, and you keep coming back because it hasn't happened yet. I and just, they just keep turning the screws uh, and turning the screws. So by the time he's actually doing all the crazy stuff, we're gonna go. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's great because when Walt finally gets the upper hand, whether you know, look, I'm the only guy that can cook or whatever, he. he you're right. He's got the he's got the brains to get the upper hand, but he doesn't, he doesn't have the street them. sense no. to hold it and to, to no. you know manipulate it into a better he, position. He, he's, he, d- he so d- he's demonstrates two dimensional thinking. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And but but it, yeah, he'll 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 work into that. He'll get into three dimensional hey, thinking very soon. So. I, mm. I didn't want to go all street on you. Let's get back to no, that. No, no, that's <laughs> right. Let's get that's back great, to the great. smart great. assessment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> little visit to the streets and, and then the whole thing with okay let's do the side story with walt so when we first see them in the pickup with uh, in the car with walt and they're gonna be, go out on the stakeout and hank wants to know about what happened to his face i here's where i this speaking to your point right now what is walt's line i'm done explaining myself so we know it's going to happen they just keep really being stingy about when it's going to happen but he gets closer and closer, and the screws get tighter and tighter and you know he's going to explode i mean let's face it at the end that end shot with him going nuts Mm-hmm. I mean, he's mm-hmm. going into madness. He's going into madness, absolutely crying and then laughing. The the dude is he's bent, <laughs> literally in a box. It's like Hamlet Shakespeare bent. I mean, he's ready to go crazy. Can you score a comeback from this though? Is yeah, that, will that help you? What's that to, to go to be mad? Right? Does, yeah. Well, well, that way you just but, but that might be what finally gets him to think outside of his oh, box. Outside of the box. Gus, is, Gus is one mistake. Hey guys, we oh, what's mind. up? We uh, we're trying to get our after buzzer dear friend on the line. Awesome. So, uh, I think Gus's mistake was to threaten his family. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because now he's got oh, I've got. Right, nothing. You're right. Because he I had cancer. I know I'm dead anyway. Yeah. But now you're going after my family. Right, and I've got nothing to lose now. Right. Because if I don't do something about it, you kill my family. Right. He took and the he, first step to try to protect him. Yeah. He can't do that. He so he took a step. And you never crazy. want to put a guy like that with nothing left to lose. Yeah. And now it's like okay, you're gonna kill my family anyway. So, I might as so does he? Ask. Well, God, we'll probably, I don't want to get into predictions, but I guess we'll we'll get when we get there. We'll talk yeah, about we are, what, what, what we're what, jumping a bit on this one. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, as we, you know, we don't have to go in order. I mean, you know, it's uh, it, it's fine. Do you want to just, just do you want to 
talk about the the visit to the old man? Or? Yeah, sure. Let's get yeah. Okay, let's because uh, then with we'll that. get back into Hank. Because Hank said some interesting things I right. want to get your take so, on. So there's some great so, quotes. Don't allow the so when he died, uh, Mike was sure to take uh, the, the the necklace he wore around his neck, and we you know we we postulated why he was doing that. And we had a couple of thoughts about it. And it came back, and one of them was. To, you guys to, had said it was for proof. Yeah, I said to prove which that he killed was. Obama. So he 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 visits Hector once again, the the old man in the in the uh, hospital. Hospital. Oh, the nursing home. Whatever. Yeah, the nursing home, which I believe it is, and uh, that's when the, the the necklace comes out to prove to him to prove to Hector that Gus got the better of his entire family, and that the Salamanca family is no more, or or Hector, I should say, is the last it. one left. And why did he single he singled out Jesse because? Uh, to because Hector had a chance to kill him and didn't. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it was because at some point he was talking about the whole Joaquin thing. Joaquin is the young is, is the youngest, so he would be his next legacy. Right. And even he, he's dead. Why do you single out Jesse? I, I I think it's just that story he was saying about how uh, I, I can't remember the details. You remember the details of Don Joaquin and the not Don Joaquin, but Joaquin and the earlier uh, section with Jesse. Um. All I know is. Gus was telling the story of how Jesse gunned him down and um, that now Hector is the last Salamanca yeah. alive. And I think he singled Jesse out because of their um, previous experiences. Yeah, together. it had to be because they let Jesse live last time. So, so yeah. in other words, yeah. I guess came back another haunt. mistake that yeah, came you back blew, to haunt yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You didn't kill me earlier. You didn't kill That's him where earlier. I figured they were going. This was a mistake you should have cleaned up like me. You should have cleaned me up right. when you which, killed my buddy. Which but, well, yeah. I, thought it was, uh, I thought it was an odd beat because that little, that well, it wasn't a little gunfight, but the gunfight that Jesse, you know, saved him with. Right. It, it. I didn't realize who he was shooting at. It was kind of a quick sort of. It's a bad guy in the bushes and yeah, he's done. But then, Gus is referencing, you know, we we shot this guy as we were making our getaway. So, well, I, even, I, I missed that beat. I guess you, um. You were saying how Gus was probably saying you should have killed me when you had the chance. Like this is your fault because you didn't clean me up. But that kind of um, that agrees with what happened with Walt later. You know, mm -hmm. like Walt he made that mistake and now Gus is definitely gonna pay. Yeah, well there you go. Exactly. Well, that happens. I mean, that's that's the typical. I mean, if I and, and you know, and then I know Steve, the you'll have a lot of thoughts on this. But how about opening on Bridge? A, the Bridge scene, on the River Kwai. Bridge on the River Kwai. Alec that. Guinness saying, yeah. what, have what have I done? done? <laughs> exactly. And can you guys, can John, you and, and Steve give the audience some context of some of our younger viewers who might not know Bridge on the River Kwai? Just briefly, the, okay. the movie and that moment. Okay. For Al, the actor Alec Guinness. Well, Alec Guinness, uh, this is World War II, <laughs> and he plays a prisoner of war, and he comes to, and he's the ranking officer that gets... Um, for the British Army. For the British Army. And he gets... Uh, uh, gets I don't know if he, they they bring him into the camp and now he be, is the ranking officer and, in the and, in the um, in the internment in, camp. He's a prisoner Japanese, of war. Yes. Prisoner of war camp. Right. Japanese. And so uh, what the Japanese are trying to do is build a bridge and they're using the prisoner of war to do it. And the prisoner of war prisoners of war don't want to do it because they obviously don't want to help. Yeah. The why enemy. would we help the enemy? But, but Al Guinness says, no, no, we're British soldiers. And, and we will build the best bridge that ever has been built. And this way, we will we will keep our we and we'll keep our troops right. We'll keep our troops unified. We'll keep our troops sharp. Look at them; they're fat. They're getting out of shape. Exactly. It, so it's it make kind of makes sense. Yeah. But but again, there's just an ugly irony to it. it. Yeah, because like they Walt. actually end up building this amazing bridge. And this bridge, of course, is gonna uh, you know uh, trains gonna go across it to help the enemy because the Japanese are gonna use it to move people, machine, material, all like weaponry, all that kind of stuff. And they build the damn thing, and then he realizes what he's done. By the end of it, that's like, yeah. what have I done? What have I done? Uh, and, of course, only for William Holden and the Americans to blow it up. Exactly. Right? Of course. Of course. Right. Was we saved the day. Absolutely. Always, always clean so it up. it's not until mm -hmm. after that he realizes what he's done, and which is exactly what's happening. You know, we, obviously the metaphor is there. Hector has, what have I done? Because he's looking at his life and his family. What have I done? Because he's, and, he's and created it, it. What he done, but then also but, take a step Gus, back. It's Walt. Walt, Walt what have I done? Because it's always the small decisions, always you know doing the the doing what we think is the right thing, uh, or maybe it's the wrong thing for the right right reasons, or it's the wrong thing for the right uh, wrong thing for the right decision. But it's always it's it's always that little thing that's that's 
out of integrity. That's that little slippery thing, that rationalization that allows us to make a choice that isn't the right choice, but allows us to make it anyway. And then the second one happens, it's easier. And the third and the fourth and the fifth. And pretty soon we're building a damn bridge for the enemy <laughs> and, and, and killing it's helping to kill our uh, fellow. And choosing to only look at, w- at what the you moment, wanted to see rather than the anyway, big picture. Instead of, do you realize you're building a bridge? No. We are shopping in our minds. We are doing everything yeah. else except, yes. right. Right. except this. Because, I mean, Walt's well, the same just, thing. And that's I'm just great. providing for my family. Exactly. If you could take every character in this, and any one of them could be yeah. building that bridge because they're all doing the that's same thing, good. except maybe... Um, um, you know, they, they also them. mentioned uh, somewhere in there three days of the Condor, and I don't yeah. and I don't know about that movie. T- t- oh, how how that does movie. that symbolically pay that off? Because you know everything, everything Robert Gilligan Redford, yeah. and them do here, which is, I I'm like stunned yeah. because every line, every word, there's a meaning. It ties back to something. So three days of the Condor, another movie. Uh, it, it, first of all, movie. amazing movie. If you ever get a chance, it holds up for me anyway, except mm-hmm. the outfits, but it holds up great. Right. Taut thriller. What Robert, about, uh, Redford, Robert Redford. He best. plays an analyst. He reads books. That's all yeah, he does. That's all he does. He goes out for lunch one day. He comes back, and everybody in his section, meaning his CIA section, is killed. Gone. And the only reason why he li- he survived is because he went out to get lunch that day and came back a different way or something like that. And everybody's killed while he was out. And now he he doesn't know why or how or and he's trying to you know My and he's God. not he's is not is this foreshadowing he's, exactly he's not an analyst he's he's not a field I mean he's an analyst he's not a field agent no. he's not prepared for this his whole line through the whole thing is I just read books exactly. I just read books and and he doesn't and know be, who to trust yeah. he doesn't know where to turn so there's Walt who's exactly. just a chemistry teacher and he, and he has yeah. to use his brains the whole time to outwit all these field agents there you go so that's the go. symbolism exactly. wow genius yeah um, and he has to come in from the cold. So anyway, that's the. Whole Do you notice there was there was lots of talk of air, air filtration? You know the mm-hmm. air filtration system. Of course, it seems well, like that a was tie all, back to lung cancer. Yeah, and it's always the tie back to you know, well, not metaphorically to the lung cancer, but obviously it's a tie back to Gale, which is a yeah he a, a soft spot and a lever point for uh, Walt because he knows that uh, Gale's dead. Well, it's also him. a great device to find out for Walt to find out how much Hank knows because while Hank is just kind of. You know, given a laundry list of where he's at in this investigation, you can see Walt is like going, "Man, you are three steps away from finding this." And yeah. Then yeah. Walt is con- connecting all the dots on how far away Hank is, while yeah. Hank is just saying, "And there's, there's this Eric Field," you know, and he's just kind of glib about it. Mm-hmm. And and I just love seeing Walt just try to think of excuses and, and <laughs> try to throw him off track. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's just. Yeah. You're not good at it. Yeah, he's horrible at it. And he's so, I, don't he's so a, bad, I don't think that's a good he lead. He has to you know, get, get into a car accident because he's horrible at it. <laughs> you guys, what was... what was? It what? isn't a win, but the I car accident. That. I loved it, it. You know, I love that. I mean, this is how... The, I know you, you talk about the symbolism, but here's right. what I thought. So, he, so he's got to go. He knows he's going to wreck the car. And I thought it was interesting that he took... Well, he took the left turn because that's what the way he said to go. But he gave the, I mean, that's the injury side to Hank. He, the yeah. self, but I'm, the, my point is, the self-preservation side, he took. <laughs> it would have been easier for, you know, to because, well, you know, Hank's already hurt, right? He right. put him at jeopardy. Of course. Because yeah. the self-preservation yeah. is there. My point is, the guy's got a good self-preservation thing going on. So, uh, that, which I think just helps in his turn. Because at some point, he is going to turn and say, okay, all bets are off. I'm so do you think, do you think that was a conscious decision by Gilligan and them? Uh, where, you know, well, where it like just seemed say, like natural to take a U-turn. Right. But why Why not just go right, right, and right? I mean, you could have done anyway. But I'm just saying, I don't know. But but when we always talk about this, we always say, these guys never make a... Uh, there's no... I don't think, yeah. I think yeah. he thinks everything through. So, But, you know, because it would be interesting. You, seriously, you got a guy who's just out of the hospital, and you turn him into the car. He does. He's got this up. But, you yeah. know, he, but he also, do, you know, it's... It's, I guess he's not so far gone because he pleads to Saul for Hank's life. Oh, yeah. You know, so he does, no, he does I, care. Uh, my you know, point is that he he's, want he's got that in him. him. Gotcha. Oh, he's I think, I think every him. step he takes with Hank is because he wants he wants Hank to stay alive. He, I, yeah. I, I think his, I, I think Walt's concern is keeping this in his box and not hurting anyone else around him. As much as he so, can. So yeah. that's why he's gotcha. driving Hank around, to protect him in his, in his odd yeah, way. Yeah, but don't you think at this point, I mean, as, as much as in denial as he is, he's got to realize this is not going to end pretty for anybody. I mean, he, the people are going to, he love people he loves are going to get hurt. They already have Hank. He's part of his family. Now, that's again, that's one removed from his family. But he's got to know by now. I mean, even before the threat from Gus, he's got to know. I mean, uh, you can't be in that much denial. I think I think he 
figured he had control over it because he was the cook and he always had that ace in the hole that no one could touch. But, but seriously, which is, it's this my, is, this as, is soon where as, I go. as soon as Jesse yeah. said, I know, can't I can buy it. He's too smart a guy. If my life's in jeopardy, how, how could he not see? Look, if they really want to get to me, all they have to do is go after my family. Jesse's one thing, you know, they can kind of go after him, put the wedge in there. But if they, he's got to know, Gus, look, how could you not see that coming? I mean, Gus is the kind of guy. So what do you? So you think Walt did see this all coming? No, or? what I'm saying is, they. I. I. I think uh, if I'm surprised that hasn't come up. Let's put it that way. Because how would Gus not want to use that if he wanted to wrangle Walt and 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 um, really squeeze him and and get him under control? That's the first thing I would have done. But this is the, the first family. episode where we we have seen more of the. Um, cartel gus up to this point it's always been about business about no you know, and, this is and, just a, right. this is so we keep this on a business. and his moves have been logical at first right. it's try, yes, try to get the, try to get the formula mm -hmm. get this get right. that and now he's he's at a place he didn't think he'd be at with jesse mm -hmm. being loyal to him but he's like no in time or do you think he realized that like i said earlier if he threatened the family then it might be, go too far yeah, he probably knows yeah. he he would put him into a corner. Maybe. And, well, that yeah. might. I mean, that's the reason why Gus wouldn't do it. That's why, and, and I would agree with that. But well, I can't believe that Walt hasn't even considered that. Oh, well, I th well why didn't he move his kids? Yeah, and do something. Yeah, I, I that Maybe. that uh, you know he knew well, his life I, I think was goes hanging back, by a thread. I think it goes back to the bridge building. I think Walt was always just seeing his little portion of the bridge, trying right. to contain it, for <laughs> and instead of like realizing that this could explode any minute right. and there could be people. Because remember, he did miss the two assassins sitting on his bed, which I think you know right. would have changed the game oh a bit for him. So, you know, yeah. I, but we may see a little bit of that. Right. Uh, we and again, that's why I thought that moment with Gus in the desert that was really wow. That's a side we're not really seeing because. You're exactly right. Now he's bringing in family. Now he's bringing in yeah, this is future. You know, it's his voice been, was deeper. He, yeah. There's definitely was more emotion. Than Gus, Gus I mean, has always I mean, been the about angle. the present. Mm. He's always yeah, been about yeah. what do we need to do now. This is the first time we really saw him say, you know, we're talking about your future and your family's future, and so that that's a game changer, definitely. Speaking of game changer, I don't know if this is a game changer so much, but I found this interesting. So when Gus talks to Jesse and he's saying. So, you know, you proved now is that you don't need Walt to cook. Mm. Right. Mm. And I, you know, Jesse says, let him go. Don't kill him. Don't kill Mr. Don't White. Kill Mr. Oh, White. such a great moment. Don't kill Mr. White. I love it. says Mr. White. And Mr. And, White. And, and, yeah, it's amazing. And, and Gus so says, calling him Mr. White. Yeah, exactly. And Gus says, you know, it won't work that way. And he says, well, then you got a problem. And puts it right He's on him. He's so amazing, yeah. Jesse. And then, but, but then when Walt actually comes to Jesse, again, all that's gone. Yeah, again, those, that, that's what I'm saying. He's it's just a great little, dysfunctional father son absolutely. conversation and you want to have. And he accuses him. He says, "You, you yeah. had them come to our place." Yeah, and, and when I wanted yeah. help, you yeah. told me to die in a barrel in Mexico. Yeah. Right. So those yeah. things, yeah, he he remembered that obviously, and that came back to haunt. I mean, that's why Walt's just made so many bad. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he has. I remember he was looking through the the uh, lab, you know, and everything, and I just kept flashing back to that little motorhome that they started in, you know. Yeah, yeah. he comes oh, stumbling wow. out in his underwear and the yeah. breather, and mm -hmm. going, we've come well, so far. you've come so far, <laughs> no, and look have. where you are. Yeah. But speaking That's of good. Uh, yeah, go bad ahead. decisions, we've kind of skipped the whole Skyler Ted. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> go ahead, bring it up now. Let's talk about that. Um, I. Was kind of surprised by how that went down. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, here was I mean, it. Did okay. Did any when the first time Ted trips over the little throw rug there? I knew that was coming. Yeah, you just went okay. Yeah, you knew oh, there it was no. there. You just couldn't. I was just well, okay. That's coming back now. When are they? How are they going to bring that one back? Yeah, I didn't know how they're going to play it, but yeah, if they introduce it, <laughs> yeah. it's going to come back. And how about Huel? Huel making him making a stand. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Huel's the big the uh, black guy. Oh, oh black guy. the security guy. Yeah. yeah. That was great. And oh, who's the? You, do you know who the other guy? The is? other no. actor is actually. A, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a brain freeze. He's a, he's a, an amazing Boston comedian. Amazing. Well, he did a nice job. I appreciate that. So, wh what do you think about Ted? You know, I love his stance. Uh, no, I I I just can't do it. It Just seems wrong. And of course, Ky yeah. Skyler, who's really good at calling calling a spade a spade, said, 
now you think is yeah. wrong. Now right. you have you a know, committing it's, fraud. It's, it's, so once stuff. again, he doesn't want someone looking over his shoulder. And it once he again, wants to, the money, and he just leave me alone. I have this money, and he doesn't want anyone looking over his shoulder. And, and another one with a series of bad decisions. Yeah. Right. You oh, know, yeah. Like, oh, I just did this for my just this, trying to just did. trying to protect my fa- my my uh, business. So was yeah. so my you guys was was he was Ted blackmailing her, or what did she uh, just infer that? No, I I think it was I, a veiled, I, I, yeah, very veiled, was, and I, I think Skyler saw right through it. I yeah. think there was a better. So way why that did you he could push? Say, why not, didn't he push harder at the I, end? I don't think he it. was expecting her to to call him on it. Right. I think he was expecting to. I'll just say it this way, and the next time I talk to her, I say, "Look, I, I I'd like to do it, but I, I I can't do it at this. I need I need more. I need your help." I, and he was gonna play it. I think he was gonna play it that way, and 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 hopefully get away with it and not have her. Yeah, he didn't want to give up his lifestyle. No, no. Uh, obviously, Which, honestly, the first thing he did was buy a Mercedes. And I thought that or was kind of one. an. I thought that was going to be a very interesting storyline where they're going to connect. Now you have this pressure of him saying, "Well, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need yeah. more." And I have that bleed coming off of you know all yeah. the balls in the air. And, and I didn't want him to die because I wanted the other guy in the mix because I wanted Walt yeah. to have another a yeah. point of wait the the guy that cuckled yeah. me. Yeah. And he's gone now, so yeah. I didn't want him to die so quickly. I'm sure they have a good reason for it. I'm, I'm sure they'll, they've got to figure it out better than I do. But uh, you know, I, I liked him being in the. Maybe he's just in a coma. Yeah, because it also <laughs> it also brought Skyler up. Yeah, we don't know if he's dead. I mean, Steve, are you joking? Or well, no, but they said at the end that it was an. We saw his finger moving, but then the guys at the end of the scene uh, at the end was Saul. The A team was Saul. Yeah. I thought they said he was dead. Okay. They, never, God. they never, never said actually it. said. Oh, they he never was said dead. it. Oh. And so Saul, when and he was, Saul said, oh, and "What are we going to do? Is, Call her up and say, oh, the check's in the mail.' But and then he's like, oh, so God. we never, we never get never to actually oh, said it. No, no. Well, his his hand did move at the end, so maybe there he's was not a little twitching. I don't know. So, any, if anybody has any thoughts on that, let us know. So, uh, was there any more on the whole? Were you surprised by what Skyler did and how she tried to handle it? I thought it was interesting that she went right to Saul. Mm. No, yeah, really, I, I didn't. I, I, because I was thinking about was that beat today, and I just figured that was going to be her only move. Well, I mean, here's because the, the reason why I was surprised by it is, you know, usually she tries the direct approach, which is what she did here, like you know, and what she did before. Well, and excuse me, she usually tries the direct thing, and then she'll find a way around. Let's face it, when she became the little tart that when she went into the IRS audit, right. IRS and, buying uh, the car wash, buying the car wash, right. she's mm-hmm. always found this way. In this one, usually there's a much more subtle way. Of, of how she gets what she wants, hmm. and what she, how she's doing right. it. There's, a, there's, and this way was just pretty direct. Yeah, very, very direct. What, what I find interesting that. about her was the fact that when Marie called, and yeah, and at the end of the show, Marie calls, and Walt has his meltdown. Yeah. in the uh, crawl space, she went and picked up the phone and stayed calm. And to me, that shows that she's going to really help him. Yeah. Steer this ship. While he's going She's going to help pull she, out of this. She maintained she's her showing, composure. Right. She's showing, again, which we've been seeing every week, mm-hmm. that she has what it takes. Yeah. To, In other words, their marriage is getting stronger since they are now both yeah. separated well, <laughs> and going their different ways. I think what we've been saying is she's been proving that there's more inside of her than just uh, this um, kind of dopey, ditzy housewife, which yeah. is what seemed like she was season one, you know, cruising yeah. eBay and just buying things and right. uh, selling them. And now it shows yeah. that she's got more gumption. And uh, and more smarts and more poise. You know, what did you guys? What was the symbolism behind yogurt ice cream? It's the same thing. Was that just rational? R- more it was rationalization? Just, I, think it was just I don't know. I, think I, mean, was, I, did, I didn't think anything. I think it was just banter. I, I just don't think they throw things away. Yeah, I, I think yeah. they had that discussion in the right. I think room. A, I think a he rationalization, said, like rational, just another. Oh, it's the same. You know, it's to rationalize the way they've rationalized all the crazy really? stuff. This I do because I I think he's just it's just every piece of this every like. You you know for these guys they have their what forty yeah. to four minutes or whatever and yeah. it's just it, it what I think is is it may have started like that but that, I think they oh I don't think any any of it's wasted is that it, look, it seems like it's just banter or whatever but it seems like they always imbue whatever the banter is and they always bring it back to either the storyline the character whatever it I've is not known them on. not to in these many no. seasons and and it was interesting that Hank said free food hey free food and it's even better if it's free drinks. And I wonder if he's been getting free health care. I wonder if if it doesn't show that he'll at some point go along with helping Walt, that he doesn't have a side to him that'll bend that'll a little the, bit. Yeah. That'll bend a little well, bit. Well, it, it, I mean, he, he has done some things in order to uh, get 
but I, and I can't. I, I, when he beat up Jeff, so you mean you mean he's yeah, like he's bended kinda, the law? Yeah, he's kind of gone outside the law. And he even what does he say? He said that one line. I, what, what was it? Was kind of like bending it or whatever, breaking. Oh, it when, when they were uh, putting the What's bug. That? When when they're putting the GPS tracker on right. Gus's yeah, car, he, he, he was kind of well, not, not really legal, but yeah, it's not. Com- not really yeah. Legal. So I yeah. was wondering when he said the line about the free food, free drinks. I I was wondering if that's not gonna. Pay off in some a way. little bit yeah. of a foreshadow of him. I do, to, uh, I do, and I guess everything they've done. We'll get more. We'll get more into it. I'm sure in predictions. You know, the the other thing is, I keep seeing more blue and tan. Well, you know, this, yeah, at the boss's place, it was all blue and tan, and then the last shot of one of the last shots of um, uh, Walt in the desert. You know, the the tan sand yeah, and the blue blue tan. sky. Uh, it's just interesting. I can't wait to sit with these guys and find out what all the, all the colors mean. Okay, I have a question about yes. that scene to the filmmakers in the room. Was that just serendipity of that cloud moving past, or were they looking at that thing going, Phil, okay, let's go ahead? I wonder if Phil saw that. I don't know if that was... Um, that was awesome. It was However, amazing. whether they planned it that was, or... or it, so you don't they, think that was CGI or anything like that? No, because I was looking at the windshield of the car, and you it could all see went over. it, it was all passing like over. a real cloud was actually... Uh, I, I think it was a lot of CGI. If but it it could um, be done CGI. I, but it had. I mean, you're out there in what is it, New Mexico, wherever they're filming. Yeah. I can't right. I mean, they're actually clouds filming. do move pretty. Yeah, quick they move. I, and they might have just you know they stuck the wide there and then. Just and they, yeah, they probably just yeah. I mean, we, remember they, the rain in you know and in, in, in cereal buddies. Cereal yeah, buddies we got rain at the perfect time. Exactly, it happens in the movie, and it just happens to be perfect, and we got lucky there. Because it goes so much to the scene of there's yeah. a cloud over you guys. It just yeah. might have been kids. in the darkness and the light. In the dark, you're in the yeah. dark, and it was just. It we was should ask them about that. My guess is they filmed that more than once. And and they probably filmed the entire scene in that wide. Absolutely, it's a very long scene. Yeah. You know? So yeah, chances are good, and yeah. it, it might have just been that those film magic moments exactly. that, that we all they, or they put get. it in because it was amazing. And and if they did put it in, who, whoever did the work on that it was amazing. You you had a question about the color. What what do you think the, all the purple represents in their house? Are they been well, yeah, Marie is Marie. She's always she's always purple, purple, purple. Purple. yeah. But what what does that? Color but we see. But we're seeing it's threads of purple. It's, the, it's, yeah. it's 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 yeah. royalty. It's it's usually it, it could be religion too, right, John? Yeah, it's really it's it's either royalty or spirit. Uh, high so spirit. the purity of what his quest is to the, the purity of his you know, well, he's, not, he's usually in something else, but yeah, I would think it'd be related to her. The the um, well, we see it. Uh, we also see um, Gus was wearing it when he. I think when he when he visited the hospital, when he visited the old age home, you see him in some purple. Yeah, which was a was a twist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, um, Saul had a purple shirt on. I think. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing it throughout, but it's definitely most prevalent with with Marie. With Absolutely. Marie, we don't know. We Absolutely. don't know exactly yet why they chose that for her, though. We haven't figured that part out. I think we. Yeah, we need to. We still need to figure that. Well, it drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. No. No. I know. I want. I'm, I need to know. I'm dying to know. Look at you know. We're watching it in the studio here. See this yeah, purple. Yeah, he's he's the got purple, purple on Saul's got the purple shirt. Which uh, they could do a, just a show on him. On Saul. Isn't it interesting Saul, that Saul? Saul Seems the one He's, that had the has the, the most. Um, by the way, right? Yeah. Let's talk about Saul. And again, this is why Vince Gilligan and his boys are so amazing. Talk about show don't tell. It was weeks ago where Jesse went into the house to give money to uh, the girl and right. the son. Yes. And they have a shot of wall of uh, Saul just looking in the rearview mirror, right. watching Jesse, and he just he he didn't smile very large, but he had just a. A slight smile on his face that indicated he got sentimental. Yeah. Like, wow, isn't that, you know what, this Pinkman kid's a nice kid. Yeah. And for him to be sentimental like that shows that he's got Yeah, he a still recognizes what that is. A little bit of humanity. A little bit. Mm-hmm. And so you see it in in these, um, we see it in these scenes where yeah. they come to visit him. Where, yeah. You know, where, where, he, where. Here's the life he could have had. Yeah. And where, where, where he doesn't have to drop dimes. He doesn't have to yeah. do much for uh, for Walt. In that moment, I mean, he gives him that number, whatever it's going to cost you. He gets paid. He's like, "Please, I need you to make this call for me." Yeah, and he's seems like he's empathetic. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it just shows the decency of the character. And again, well, that's just, what I was going to say. He's right now. He seems to be the most decent and rational out of all of them. <laughs> I do like. And how who he's, thought? Because in the beginning, you thought, "What a oh yeah, yeah." Club. When you were first introduced, he's trying to explain what them a how to be slimy guy. Be but no, he, he turns yeah. out to be. You guys suck at peddling. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Uh, but here's the two things I really love about Saul. I like how he gets so irritated with everybody being so amateurs, and he's got this little, you know, blow right. up. 
doll in yeah. the top of his business. And um, how he, he, again, go back to the bridge analogy. He, if anybody, is only looking at his one little portion of the bridge. Uh, it, but he's, he seems to be the only one that occasionally gets the whole picture. Right. And, and when he does, he kind of has this moment of, what are you guys getting me into? <laughs> this, is, this is getting crazy. And then he's right into it. Yeah. More symbolism with, uh, with Huell saying, it was an act of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was nice. Of course, and this is where we get to see where the rug comes back into play. He trips on it, yeah. bangs his head, and who knows if he's dead or just paralyzed or whatever. But the the check is in the mail. I'm sure if it's coma or whatever, it's it's much. It would it, be it'd be better, more dramatic, yeah. and, and more pressure on At some point. Yeah, our main characters. Yeah, I, they're just laying so much in. It just seems uh, he's done. You're done. Well, this is the other thing that bothered me is you know he's writing a check for six hundred seventeen and whatever. 226. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I knew ben. Benjamin would think about it. I knew you'd have that. But that, that that would bring up red flags to the IRS. Here's a guy who apparently has run his business into the ground. Would you come up with 617 in cash? They tried to cover by the mom. By right, the that's what they'd aunt, say. Favorite aunt, the great aunt. No, no, that's what the, no, that's what she said to him. That's what Skyler said to Ted in order to get him to take it. But the IRS isn't going to go, you have an aunt? Well, what was it? They well, don't know that well, story. Well, wouldn't they, he say that's the money that was buried with the oversight? Well, if they know that, or if you say that's buried with the oversight, then where's the rest of it? Where is there is there other money that's buried? This is the thing I didn't this, think. This, this is the this is the what he, note that I was having. What the other it, day. I think what they should have done is made made some sort of payment plan or whatever, because th this to me is a red flag. Usually, when the IRS gets a lump sum like that, I would think that they want to go. Wait, how did you get all that money? Well, so fast? unless they, unless he borrowed it. And pull it together. You know, I, but I we'd, know. we'd have to talk to somebody more in corp who does handles the corporate side of the IRS. There aren't many agents who do it. I know that right now with what's going on in our country and how broke we are, I know they'd be damn happy to get the money. Mm -hmm. They'd be pretty happy to get the money. And I think that um, that would be the first order of business. No, I would agree with that. But I, I'm, I'm saying Sky is so smart I would uh, about this. It just seemed like... like that's well, they and, usually, and I may look, be completely wrong, but that's what it seemed like to me. I know some people who are actually going I through it. an IRS question. Yes. Why? You Why you're, you're an IRS guy? Well, first off, let me. Uh, there's a great book. It's a fictional book called The Pale King by David Foster Wallace. Okay. Uh, I only heard the word IRS. What is your question? <laughs> We're well, talking about the old okay. record company. No, I'm kidding. Uh, when, <laughs> so they're going to make this lump sum payment for all the money he owes. There's $617,000. Mm -hmm. And I would think that would that would bring up a, if if he's known as somebody who's run his business into a grant into the ground and then did it with fraud, I would think a lump sum payment of that kind of a, uh, that amount would would bring up a red flag to the IRS. Like, whoa, where did you get all this money? I thought you were. In, don't they know he went bankrupt? I, I know so. Where did that money come from? Well, it, it's actually weird in reading about this uh, uh, the book. Um, Dave Foster worked there for a few years, and they're actually. In terms of who they choose to audit, they basically want to get enough money back because there's a huge gap between the money they collect and the money that they're supposed to collect. Right. Obviously, you know, people don't file, people underpay, or they yeah. just don't file at all. And so, in some regard, if the IRS gets that money, mm -hmm. case closed. They're not going to question I, it. I know someone right now who owes six figures, not that that much, and they just they just want it. They want it all, and he's trying to do a payment plan, and they're like, no. And he's basically grabbing five or ten grand from okay. everyone he knows, so including you yours truly. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 it's just, and that's just what he's gonna do. Okay. And it's six figures, so it's 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 like a hundred and twenty something like that. But they're not asking; they just want because he's trying to. Can I do it? No, no, no. Give us some money, or you're going to jail. Anyway, my point is, it, it, I I think it would bring up a red flag. Even if it does, that's great because it still brings pressure to Skyler, and that, I mean, it still made that think, whole thing happen. I think, I mean, from what I'm seeing now, from dealing with it, it's, they just want the they just want the money. Now, if somebody were to dime him out, sure, because most of their, from what I know, most of the things they go on are from tips. being are tips. And if someone would dime them out and say, "Hey, why don't you?" Then they would check, but I think it's let's move on to the next person. I think let's put our money. Okay. We got our money now. Let's because why. Why go at why we can take this time and go after someone else who has money? Right. Yeah, and this is uh, I better get an exclusive for this. Back in 1986, the gap between money collected and money not collected was um, 30 billion dollars. Imagine what it is today, John. You think they really 
You know you what I mean? You think they yeah. really care? I mean, people say they're like. I think what they care about is well, there's no, probably people more. Say, is no, my but point. people. If I get six hundred seventeen thousand from them, there's probably more money there. I think, Let's go get it. I think they, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but I think they need the manpower. They don't have the manpower you think they do. They do. But ironically, they have the manpower to come after like people who make like under a hundred a year. Right. They don't have the manpower to go after the corporate people. I just think they're like. Listen, people say it all the time that they're like the mafia. They like the mafia just wants to get paid. That's it. Yeah. Get their but money here's, and move here's, on. here's the point that I was trying to figure out. If if they have, if he gives um, her the money back, why can't you just do an end around and just figure out with Saul? Okay, look, Say just, that with your son here. <laughs> just <laughs> use Saul to get it to the IRS under his name. Look, just just you, you just you, you guys give him do the money. It. it doesn't figure out how you can do it. Where you? Open I guess you could, but then who knows? You, she could have, shouldn't, probably should have done that originally. Yeah, she should. She should have done it originally. Yeah. See now, and that is the other point. When she saw him spending all that money, so that that was I was thinking. Do they not have as much money anymore? Well, yeah, that, by the end we learned well, that they don't. They, they don't, don't have near the amount. of He doesn't money that have they, the five hundred thousand to that he needs to, yeah, uh, to, to change his identity. Out. So, right, because no. at some point we were talking fifteen million for the year. Seven million. Seven million a year is is seven he would million. have. Yeah. Seven point seven four. Point. Seven, because at some point, point Gus said let's round it. Said. Seven and a half. Gus said let's round it up to fifteen, point. when they were talking about the millions, in one of the episodes. So I figured it was fifteen million that he was coming his way. Well, he gets seven and a half a year. And then right. they bought the car wash for about 900000 900, right. And he hadn't been working with Gus for a year. Right. So, right. And then 900000 600 And anyway, we know 000. he doesn't have 500 to 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 relocate. Right. I mean, that's that's the point we know. But here's the thing. that Whatever it is, that storyline is not going away. They've put a lot of weight and effort into it. So whether or not uh, Beneke is alive or dead, that's still going to come back. And mm -hmm. it's, it's staying alive. It's got to stay alive. It's a very odd way to end that storyline if it's not. No, yeah, I, they usually don't. They, this stuff usually hangs out for a little bit. They use it again and again. They're really good at that. Crazy. All right, so listen, I, I think the last thing I want to get to is the, the meeting in the desert. I think, Unless there's anything else we wanted to cover, but the meeting in the desert with the... First of all, it's just a great shot. Just love those big, wide-open expanses, the way they do that. Oh, do, you, who, do they effective. use the same DP? Every, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't great know. question. I, ha I have Because who, we'll need to. It's got a fantastic it, it, who, look. Whoever it is, yeah. that was a great, yeah, great no. representation of work there. And just the way when the hood got pulled off and the blinding light. And the uh, light. Stuff, that was nice. And how messed up his face is. Yeah. Good, great makeup, by the way. Quick callback. When uh, Michael gets shot in the ear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Throwing that flat oh. back. Yeah. <laughs> all irritated. And Walt's Not makeup. Not upset. Just, just, just annoyed. irritated. Just yeah. annoyed. I was like, that's, annoyed. that's their, their makeup is really good. I just think of Mike saying, you're loyal to the wrong guy. And I say to myself, no, Mike, you're wrong. Yeah. Your guy, yeah. I go back to, I had this discussion with someone over the weekend. But, you know, your guy killed Victor. And I think Victor was a great earner and a great worker. Yeah. So he, it shows that he'll kill anyone yeah. that makes a mistake. Right. And whereas Walt won't. No. You know, so. Well, that's, I guess that's what's putting him where he is. Victor. He has no. The, the, I mean, he could have sent Victor options. away. Maybe yeah. sent him down to Mexico. If he sent Victor away, Victor would have cooked, and he would have no, no, started. It, to st that's this, his this operation. Was Gus's thinking that if, if yeah. he sent Victor away, Victor would have started. Oh no, cooking. Business, no, 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 business yeah. reasons. Great yeah, decision. Yeah, but here's the thing. But but you could easily send him. Away. He's got a huge operation. You could have sent him out of state somewhere. Right. Not to Senator. not to cook, but to run your business elsewhere. I think Gus thought if he was if, that if he loyal. He has that amount of information. Sooner or later, he's going to find yeah, somebody. Yeah, absolutely. No, I know. I'm I just saying. I don't know. No one's disagreeing that from yeah. a business side, it that just shows how ruthless he is because exactly. the guy was so loyal to him. Right. And so for anyone smart to to. To be as loyal to him, you know, you're, yeah. when, when's your ticket going to yeah, get pulled? You, you yeah, know, when, for, for Mike to say that, I mean, it seems, I mean, Mike, even Mike is going to get, I mean, he, look, let's put it, I mean, I don't know if Mike was conscious when he realized that nobody was working on him. Right. But Mike well, was expendable. He, I, mean, I, mean, 100%. I think Mike knows that. We're, we're not going to see Mike for a little while because he's going to be he's recuperating be, in yeah, Mexico. Which is good. Keep him out of the picture for a little bit. That means Walton. In that yeah, you see, it coming to the star. end, we're starting Maybe to focus. You gotta, you, focus we'll bring him back in. We'll bring him back in. Focus the stories now. But, but okay, it's just so just that you know when Walt on his knees saying you can't kill me because if you do, Jesse won't cook for you. And even after all that stuff's been happening, Walt still knows that. Right. As far as much as hey, what's up. Hi. Hello. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm sitting, Tammy. I'm Tammy, sitting, thank I'm you very much for coming um, in. So they have a couple different uh, cinematographers. DPs. Uh huh. 
Um, when Michael Slovis was in 2009, 2010, and nice. then he did 14 episodes. Reynaldo Villalobos, Villalobos did six yeah. episodes in 2008, and then um, 2010 and 2011 episodes have been Peter, Peter Rainier and Nelson Craig. And then they had um, two production designers for the whole series. Wow. There you go. We need and to talk their to art them. department is massive. There's like wow. 60 people on wow. their art department. Come on in. What's wow. up? So, which obviously just, you know, there's they pay very close attention to all that stuff. Obviously. And, as, and as you it. can see, they do. Yeah. Well, thank you very much that's for the scoop. That's an After Buzz exclusive. Is that an exclusive? Yeah. And Tamara, we have another tax you. question? And it's not a tax <laughs> question. Oh, okay. uh, speaking that? of cinematographers, for those of you in the industry, you guys might appreciate this. Tonight is the Cinematographers Award. So uh, check that out online, and uh, maybe they'll hire some of these guys for Breaking Bad. Who knows? There's an award ceremony for cinematographers? Yes, there is. Wow. Okay. And it's cool. tonight. What about tax attorneys? Yeah, no, he's not one. Okay. Thank you. All right. So anything else about that, Ted? Out, Ted? You know, the showdown I just, between. I just, I, I, you see the ruthlessness and the, and, yeah. and of, of Gus, but you also see he is unnerved because he raised his voice. Yeah. But I love Walt on his knees. Still kind Still of standing defiant. up to him, yeah. Being defiant. And you, you know, Gus has got to respect that. You know, he's not sniveling, he's not crying. And I just love the fact that it's tearing Gus up to not be able to cap him. Yeah. And he's he, just yeah. like, I got to keep you alive. And he doesn't. He doesn't need to keep him alive. The only reason is Jesse. Is Jesse. Yeah. Is, is if he can and keep he breaking know, that he wedge. Knows he's he's got, he knows he's got to kill him because he knows Walt enough to know my formula used is means everything to me. It's my life's work. Right. And you will have to kill me uh, to, 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 to get away with this. There's no way I'm going to be. A guy like that would relocate with his family for a little while. Yeah. And as and soon as he always, got yeah. his strength well, back. Well, I mean, I mean the, the whole thing is we've proven every time you left, leave something hanging like that, it comes back to bite you. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the whole idea of the yeah. vendetta. And, I mean, you can't leave anybody alive. That's what. That's why they do. That. Take them all out. All right. Listen, we're gonna go to a break now. Is there anything? Any last word before we go to our break? No. All right. All right, Jesse. If you do us a kind favor and take us to the commercial, please. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Genesis is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Big television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy, Nucky is a villain. 424 256 1729. 424 256 1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband? Or your best friend. <laughs> the wig! The wig! Oh, that wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Give everyone a moment. All right, and we're back. All right. So. So. Let's get it. What are we talking about? I think we news. Go we go to news. news. We go to news. Yeah, Jesse, what do we got for news? After Buzz TV News. All right, so Aaron Paul, Nick Offerman, and Mary Winstead. Uh, from Parks and Recreation and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World have joined the cast of James, I'm gonna, Han Soltz, smashed an indie comedy about an alcoholic married couple who bonded over their love of drinking until the wife decides she wants to get clean. According to the film, Paul and Winstead are in talks to play the couple, and Offerman is already set to play Winstead's boss. That's great. That's, I mean, he's looking for new roles. Like, that's yeah. a role he'll probably kill. Yeah, I imagine so. That's great. No, good to hear. I would hear. really like to see him outside of this to see, okay, you know, what else can you can do? Can he do? Yeah, he did. He had a small role on uh, Big Love, but it was very small. You didn't really get to see him do much. I mean, he does a yo really good, but yeah. you know, I want to I see something. Yo, Mr. White. Yo. All yo. Right. Yeah. All right, what else we got, Jay? So Dean Norris, who plays Hank on the show, has signed up for a guest role in Castle. The Breaking Bad star will appear in an upcoming episode of the show as a hostage negotiator. His character appears when Castle and Martha get caught up in a bank heist. As well as starring in Breaking Bad, Norris has had guest roles in shows such as CSI 24 and Medium and emerged last month that he has signed up for, to appear in CSI New York. Ooh, making the rounds there. Nice. He's always good. I've yeah, seen him I, in a million things. I don't think these you're going to be able to hide these guys. No. I think they're going to show up in a lot of stuff. 
All right, and that's your After Buzz TV breaking bad news and gossip for the week right. of September 25th, 2011. Thank you very Thank much, you. Jesse. Thank you, All sir. right, let's go straight to predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. What do you got? Ben, who lives, anything? who dies, who lives, who dies. Well, from I, the think, I think Beneke, I think Beneke is alive. I predict he's not dead. I predict that's my prediction. All right, I'll, I'll go along with that. I don't think he's dead. I, I think it's it's good to keep him up, keep him alive, and keep him pushing buttons. I think Walt's gonna begin plotting his um, comeback. Yeah, you know, I, what I'm, what I, I, you know, is gonna happen is it, is these these last two episodes. If I think back to last, was it last season's two episodes where we had the drive mm. <laughs> or no run i'm sorry it was yeah run. Run. run yeah no that, that was, was the that second was to last episode season two wasn't it or was that no no, the, no that was was early, that a finale early season was three. the finale nope that was the finale i'm sorry it was uh, the finale. when he when right. he, he, he runs over the he he runs over the kids yeah he runs over the two guys the other one. and yeah. last season of course was with the gale thing so uh, but even the I, I remember one of them being even this the, the the penultimate episode was was had this great cliffhanger it was like what what and then, because I thought that would have been the cliffhanger. I can't even remember what oh, yeah. season it was. They get really good, like, not that they're not really good already, but once you get to the second to last yeah, one. Yeah, second to last one is just like, like wow. That's usually. Yeah, you, you think that's the cliffhanger, or you think that's yeah. the, 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 the it's last usually episode. It's pretty not. Well, that's true. Aaron yeah. did, Aaron, when we were had our conversation with Aaron Paul the other day, he was telling us that uh, the last four episodes are amazing. And he was right. Obviously, the last two that we've seen today's and last week's have been amazing. So I can't even wait for these other two. I don't really have a prediction other than I think um, uh, we're gonna see the we're gonna set up the arc obviously for the next uh, season, which is gonna be Walt. I think uh, becoming the Heisenberg, we've been dying to see him come. I mean, we gotta see something. So right? I wonder. We've only seen glimpses. Of do you guys think? We haven't really. Does seen Gus get much. vanquished, or does he just get? No. He can't. He can't exist. in Walt and he cannot exist in the same world. It's, so it's you just think heading one of those two are dying? And do you think I've, by this season? Yeah, by, I've, I've read yeah. a description of episode thirteen, and it's, which is Walt and Gus have a showdown. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be. It's good. gonna be so, awesome. But, but do you think he's gonna kill him, or do you think I it's think gonna set up? He'll have the to. next season, and the whole next season is them two, Addy. I mean, or does well, it become? Or does of, it become Ronnie and Sammy on Jersey Shore, where it's just too much, just that, to have those two battling each other like no, a whole uh, season? I, I can't. I don't think it's to make going everyone to. laugh. <laughs> but you know, do we have to create a new nemesis? Actually, thing? they're merging yeah. the two no, shows. I, well, it's I really don't think that's gonna happen. Well, it can't be the cartel. So who else could they bring in? Because the cartel, somebody knew. I mean, unless somebody else from the cartel, the well, someone from, no, from, from Chile, from Chile. This whole season, well, that's true. Was about Walt and Gus's constant battles. Like, right. They set that up. Well, this at was, the end this, of but this three. was this was about their mental battles. It wasn't really anything about physical. There was no gun. I just can't see them going a whole season. It's, I can't either. But you know, I, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out who would be. He may go to jail and maybe doing things from the jail. Who knows? You know, yeah. it might be something like that. But Chile, I think we don't know what's yeah, down the, in Chile exactly and who he is. And yeah. That's true. Because they are running oh, out of is. things for him to run from. I mean, you know, he's come out to his <coughs> wife, so she's in on it. You know, I mean, Hank, how long can they keep that investigation going without him looking, you know, inept? So uh, it's because I've okay, Chile. Sure. The people from Chile uh, make their to come and uh, and and does Hank help out? Maybe they'll bring Saul up more. What are they going to do, Hank? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just know Walt's making a comeback. That's yeah, all I'm that's saying. It, <laughs> and it, 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 it may not be next week. Yeah. It'll be the week after. And I know I hate the fact that I have to wait 14 I days know. to I'm get sorry, to the buddy. sending. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, what, but are you kidding? <laughs> You're your going to have to wait how many months for it to start oh, up after again? That, I know. Crazy. No, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal. brutful. It's tough for You're him. You're going to have to, you know. Yeah, go, awful. Go, go, well, through, go through your box yeah. set. No, no, no. No, no. My sub you text is Boardwalk Empire. Okay, there you go. That started tonight, so that's good. That'll keep me going. All right. Okay, before we leave, uh, let's remind everybody again about the finale that we're... Uh, yeah, as of now, tentative uh, date October 8th for the season finale. We hope to be live at the John Lovitz Comedy Club watching the show. If you're in L.A. and you're a fan of the show, um, a fan of Breaking Bad, come on down and watch it there at yeah. the club. There's uh, drinks and food. We'll all watch it together. And then hopefully... Um, we'll go up live and do do an after show there, and um, we should have Maria Menounos as well as some of the people from Breaking Bad. 
I think it's uh, it's oh, October. Here comes Phil. Nice. Uh oh, we got another. Oh, sorry. What I have do we to got? Make a correction. It is the John Lovitz Comedy Club. However, it also turns into the John Lovitz Podcast Theater. Oh yes, oh. The Podcast oh. Theater. So we can't be funny. Thank you for that correction. No. Okay. No. All right. It's you'll have no problem with that. I think it's ninth. the ninth. The ninth is the ninth is Sunday. Then is the ninth. Yeah. Okay. So check your local listings. We'll talk. We'll tell. Hopefully, we'll yeah, have more we'll, to tell we'll, you we'll guys sure next week. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We'll have more information next week for you. Ho- hopefully, it'll, it'll mostly be solidified, so we'll know exactly what's happening where. All right. Well, that's it for everybody. Anybody have any last words before we check out of here? Yeah, I just how powerful <laughs> was the laughter at the end? Oh, that's it right. Was we like were talking the about the Joker. Oh, yeah. The My crazy, God. Yeah. It, you know, when he was start, it sounded like he was crying at first, and that crying made you know segued mm-hmm. into laughing and the cackling. And I loved how you just heard it, and she's on great the phone. Great sound design. Great sound Marie, design. Oh God, that was amazing. Not only was she on the phone, but she was like back to her normal. I just got to maintain. I'm gonna everything's right. gonna be she's fine. Stepping up Tears for them. in her eyes again. The bridge. She's only seen her portion of the bridge right there. She's right. on the God, phone. I'm only great. gonna see that portion. Oh God! And, and this great. this scene right here, framed where yes, he is in yeah. a box. He's he, you know they literally have boxed him in. Yep. In the crawl space. In, in the, crawl the crawl space. space. How you low see, can you and go? You see the way she backs away. The <laughs> yeah. w- the wife yeah. like, oh my goodness. He's yeah. Freaking out. Yeah. yeah. Just terrific stuff. Great stuff, guys. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for thank joining you. us here for another After Buzz Breaking Bad for Jesse Janity in the booth. For Steve Bottomley out here, for Big Ben, for Kevin Undergaro, I'm your host, John Comerford Zen. Thank you, and we are out. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.